President Hockfield, it is with great pleasure that I present to you the senior gift of over $41,000. Thank you. Congratulations, class of 2008. We made it. Thank you, Fee, for this marvelous gift, and um, thank you, Class of 2008, for this all-time high participation record. It's really tremendous. Graduates of MIT, this day is for you. Here in the stately embrace of Killian Court, with the enthusiastic company of MIT's Class of 1958 and their brilliant Cardinal Blazers, We have gathered to celebrate your success. <clears throat> you have distinguished yourselves in courses of study that stand among the most demanding in the world. For all that you have accomplished, you have our deepest respect. Of course, each of you has had a little help along the way. None of you would be here this morning without the love, support, and inspiration of the family and friends who nurtured and cajoled you, and who guided and consoled you since childhood, the ones who watched your very earliest experiments and mopped up afterwards, the ones who embraced your dreams and who believed in you, even when you had your own doubts. This day is for them, too. Graduates, I invite you please to rise and to join me in thanking your family and friends. There is another important group to acknowledge. Those who observed your more recent experiments, those who have challenged you to achieve more than you believed you could, those who have taken you with them straight to the exhilarating edge of knowledge and discovery, the incomparable faculty of MIT. Let's thank them too. Now, to those of you graduating today, I want to speak to the nature of our world at this moment and what that world will ask of you. You have come of age at a moment of rare creative intensity. At the intersection of technology and society, the soci these changes that have erupted during your time at MIT have transformed our cultural landscape. Facebook and social networking have changed the structure and texture of friendship. They have transformed business and politics, and they have established entirely new networks of understanding. Blogging, wikis, and the phenomenon of YouTube have unleashed incredible tides of candor, interaction, and creativity. Each of you has played a role in that sea change a role in inventing what Professor Henry Jenkins calls participatory culture. Our society will never be the same, and now we're all experiencing a new world of creative connection. During your years here at MIT, we've also witnessed a world frozen by uncertainty. It has been a time of war, many wars. It has been a time of incomprehensible human suffering at the hands of nature, from New Orleans to Sumatra, Yangon to Chengdu. It has been a time for acknowledging a volatile climate and for adjusting to a wavering economy. In this new world, it's impossible to deny our interconnection and easy 
to be overwhelmed by uncertainty. So as you emerge from the more structured realm of studies into the fluid realm of your future, how should you face this new world? I believe that we've already heard the answer this morning because the deepest lesson to be gained from Professor Muhammad Yunus is his optimism. Not the optimism of naivete, not the optimism of boosterism, but the optimism of the practical visionary, a kind of optimism that I think of as very MIT. It's the kind of pragmatic inspiration that allowed William Barton Rogers to found a place as bold and as unusual as MIT in the midst of the Civil War. With that same undaunted vigor, MIT President Carl Taylor Compton helped pioneer the venture capital industry right here in Boston when any enthusiasm for backing promising but risky ventures had run state, straight down the drain of the Great Depression and World War II. It's the practical and wavering spirit that pushed MIT researchers and graduates through the immense technical problems of, develop of developing radar and of guiding the first trip to the moon and of turning AIDS from a death sentence to a treatable disease. It is the animating force behind all of our most remarkable research, from implantable wafers that have revolutionized the treatment of cancer to the daring real-world analysis and prescriptions of our Jamil Poverty Action Lab. It is the spirit behind the Laboratory for Sustainable Business at MIT Sloan and behind all our efforts to design and engineer realistic, affordable green cities around the world. In the end, it's the kind of do-something optimism that allows you to look at a problem as big and ancient and as impossible as poverty and make it yield to hard analysis and fresh ideas, as Professor Yunus dared to do. It's the kind of optimism that allows you to look at a problem as big and new and tangled as energy and climate change and to react not with fear nor paralysis, with the analytical curiosity and rigorous creativity of a community of disciplined minds. And it is certainly the kind of practical, visionary optimism that all of you have shown over and over in your classrooms and your clubs, on the playing field, in the studio, and on the stage, when you were working for a grade, and when the only one grading your performance was yourself. In its tagline, one MIT student organization especially captures that optimism and the spirit and promise of your entire generation. The Vehicle Design Summit. For those here who haven't heard about it, the Vehicle Design Summit is the brainchild of two MIT engineering students, Anna Jaffe and Robin Allen, who graduates today. Their goal? To create an affordable car that will achieve 200 miles to the gallon. The students are motivated by the energy and environment problems that I highlight most acutely our shared uncertainty and interconnectedness. But they're tackling this challenge with your generation's pass passion for creative connection. They've not only built a broad interdisciplinary team of students here at MIT, they've also knit together a huge network of inspired minds at dozens of universities around the world. Their tagline? We are the people that we have been waiting for. And let me assure you, we have been waiting for you too. Now is your moment to take the powers of analysis, the capacity for good old-fashioned hard work, the fearless creativity, the constructive irreverence, and the instincts for practical visionary leadership that you have honed at MIT. It's time to take that show on the road. We will certainly miss you, but the world needs you. In this challenging moment, we celebrate your powers of creative connection. Congratulations on the great distances you have traveled while here at MIT, and the very best of success in your adventures ahead. <laughs>